uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming to this session. Uh, I wanted to make funny joke and ask you to go to Angular JS workshop in the other room, but it's full, so my joke doesn't work here. So, uh, first to introduce ourselves, uh, my name is Dushan, and I am uh, IT consultant at Code Center here in Novi Sad, uh, just across the road. And if anybody wants to contact me uh, for any unknown reason, this is my Twitter handle. Yeah, hello everyone. Welcome again to our presentation. My name is Ozren. I'm working as an IT consultant at Concentric here in Novi Sad. Today I uh, will be defending Apache Pig's Honor uh, in a vicious fight against Java. Yeah, so let's start. So uh, today's uh, session is about big data and uh, things like MapReduce, Pig, Hadoop. Uh, just before we start, uh, how many of you guys uh, and girls know uh, what MapReduce is? Cool stuff. Okay, so for those who don't know, uh, uh, example and how to compare what what uh, differences between uh, MapReduce algorithm in in uh, processing your your information and your data comparing to relational databases. If you have a relational database, for example, and enormous data in it and you want to process it somehow, you want to run an, uh, an, an analysis, what would you do? You would basically fire a query against it, fetch your data from all of your distributed uh, databases, from all of your shards of your databases, and you will have to wait for that data to come to you, and then you will analyze it. In case of MapReduce, things are a little bit different because uh, job and analysis, analysis is not uh, happening where data, uh, where you are, but where data is. So basically, in MapReduce, you are sending your jobs to data nodes of the uh, to Hadoop uh, data nodes, and analysis is done over there. And uh, to explain you uh, better differences between uh, Java MapReduce and Pig MapReduce implementations, we prepared an example, and. Yeah, we, we are going to use that example to compare those two things. So what inspired us to perform this analysis? Well, for starters, big data is currently one of the most popular fields in IT industry, right? Uh, big companies like Google, Facebook, Yahoo are constantly popping in fuel into this area. Then we have a Hadoop, which as a solution for a big data problem has become very popular. Today, there are so many services around Hadoop that they actually form an ecosystem atop of Hadoop platform. And then, yeah, the most important reason probably is a personal one, of course. So Dushan and I, we are both currently working on a big data project where we are dealing with, uh, where we are building and improving reporting infrastructure, and we are dealing with batch processing. In our case, uh, in our project, we are using Apache Peak for this. And since we are both Java developers, we were interested in, in how would Java do those stuff. So that's why we decided to perform this analysis. Uh, the goal of this analysis, is, of course, to compare both approaches, so to compare Apache Pig and Java MapReduce, to see, to analyze the most important factors when choosing the appropriate technology, and to get a clear picture in the end about which use cases are most suitable for Java and which are more suitable for Pig MapReduce. What did we use to perform our tests? You can see here that we used a Hadoop 2.3 version which came as a part of Cloudera dis uh, Hadoop distribution, 5.1. I think, if I'm not wrong, that this is one of the latest uh, Cloudera distribution currently available. We used Pig version 0.12, also part of Cloudera distribution. Uh, anyone here that had a chance to work with Pig yet? Okay, cool, some of you, no? Okay. Uh, just a couple of words about Pig. So what is Pig? Apache Pig is a framework for uh, analyzing and processing large data sets. It's made up of two components. The first one is Pig Latin. Pig Latin is a high-level uh, language, high-level scripting language, which is, um, which is used basi basically for data manipulation and transformations. Initially, it was developed to enable non-technical staff to be able to read and understand, and even maybe, yeah, maybe write some of uh, MapReduce tasks. The second component uh, is a Pig compiler. Uh, the purpose of Pig Compiler is to translate Pig Latin script into Java MapReduce. So basically those were the two components of Apache Pig framework. A little, uh, some words of, uh, about uh, our example. Uh, if you Google things like MapReduce, you will see a number of examples like uh, word count. So that is 
uh, hello world example of MapReduce, we wanted to skip that. So hello world example is no good for any, any analysis and any comparison that you really want to learn something. So uh, we created our own example and for that reason we imagined that two of us are owners of a really, really big uh, online store, something awesome. like yeah. uh, something like Amazon, for example. And for that, uh, because of that, we want to see, we want to know the behavior of our customers I because we want, of course, to earn more money, but uh, also we want to help our customers. And um, we divided our customers in uh, separate groups. And uh, we divided, in this case, we divided them uh, in groups uh, in terms of age and gender. For example, uh, we might be interested in a particular group of how, for example, females in age of 20 to 25 are behaving in our, uh, in our online uh, web store. Or maybe in some other circumstances, how a group of uh, males between 30 and 35. Um, and uh, this particular uh, report we wanted to create was that for each of those groups, we want to know um, uh, four things, and that, uh, those are top five products that the group is buying, uh, average number of visits per, uh, average, uh, average, sorry, average number of views per visit. So we want to know how many products uh, people from a certain group are actually viewing be before they are buying anything, average number of purchases. So we want to know if anybody comes to our uh, our online store, does it really buy something or or not? and average purchase at the end, so how many, uh, how much money does a, a, a group usually spend. Uh, then we need an input for that, so we generate some input and we use the JSON input for this, for this occasion. And this is how one input JSON record looks like. It has a session ID, which is a unique identifier of a, of a visit, of a customer visit to our website. It has a uh, customer category ID, that so we want to recognize uh, which uh, the category that uh, this customer comes from. It has some description of that category, and it has an array of products with information about the product, which has, for example, identifier of the product, it has the price of the product, so we can calculate later, and we have information if the product is bought or not. So, so what did we compare? Uh, first of all, we compared readability and maintainability. Those are really important, right? Then we compared uh, the performances, and in the end, we compared dev tools. Uh, by dev tools, we consider everything that can actually contribute you to the better development environment, such as uh, support from ID, uh, possibility of testing, possibility of debugging, and so on. So basically, everything that can contribute you to have a more decent environment. Let's start with Pig. I mentioned that uh, Pig Latin is a high-level scripting language, and it is very similar to SQL. It's uh, easy to read, it's simple to write, it's easy to understand. Uh, it has also, as a SQL, it has a limited number of predefined functions. So you don't have such freedom as you are maybe used to with Java, but still it's very nice. Now I would like to go through the entire code required to implement our use case. So know that I just said the entire, not just part of it, the entire code. I will show you what I did and why I did it, so bear with me, okay? So what would be the first logical thing to do uh, when we are starting to write our pig script? Of course, we need to load our input data. Dusha mentioned that uh, our input data is currently in JSON format, so that's why I had to use JSON loader function to be able to read the JSON files. In this pig version, JSON loader is a built-in function in pig. Uh, before version 11, it was not part of the framework itself, but you could have used it from Piggy Bank project. What is Piggy Bank? Uh, you can just imagine Piggy Bank as a place where Pig developers are sharing their own UDFs for others to use. Let's get back to the code. So what I needed to do here is to just uh, define what is the location of an input file and to define a JSON schema. JS JSON schema will of course be used to read the JSON files. After I have uh, loaded the product information in a big context. I need, of course, to read the information about categories. Dushan mentioned what is that. And I'm interested here particularly in three fields. So in category ID, age, and gender. Okay, so when we have our data loaded into pig context, we now need to join them. Yeah, you guessed right. We'll just use Apache pig join function, which is very similar to SQL join statement. 
And also, Dushan explained what our example is all about. We have four reports. Uh, the first one is to uh, show top five selling products per customer category. So that's why what I need to do now is to go through each of the records and pick up the fields that I'm interested in. Those would be the following. So session ID, uh, that's like unique identifier for uh, session or for visit. Uh, category ID, age, gender, and of course the information about products. Products are stored in an array in our JSON file. And that's why I had to use flatten function. Flatten function is uh, Apache Pig's built-in function. It enables us to uh, read the elements of an array. Now, what we need to do the next, what we need to do for the next is um, we need to filter products that are actually bought. I think if you try to write down this requirement on paper, it will look something like this. So it's easy. Now that we have our products, we need to count them. And in order to count them, we first need to group them. So we, have, we are going to use group by function, and we are going to group on a category level, but also on a product level. So you can see here that we have fields uh, such as ID and name. Those are products ID and product name. Why are we doing this? Because we need to get the counters for each of the products that are actually sold. <coughs> after, we, after we have grouped them, all we need to do is just to call uh, pix function count, which will do the counting for us. I mean, it just doesn't get any easier than this, right? Uh, the requirement for the report was to show top five selling products per customer group. So that's why we need to group them again. This time, we are only grouping on a category level. So there are no product ID or product name fields. And for the final touch, all we need to do is to sort them and to limit them so we can get only top five, and that's it. The results will be stored in HDFS, so that's short of Hadoop distributed file system. And we also agree that we want to have our results in JSON format. That's why, again, I'm using JSON storage function as well as in built-in function in PIG to store my results in a JSON format. And all I need to do is just to provide the location of the result file. So you now just saw the code for implementation of first use case. This one was the most complex one. The other three are easier than this. So I'm going, I won't go into details about those. I will just say a couple of things. Uh, in the first case, we had to do the counting. But in other three reports, we have to calculate the average values of particular fields. And to do so, we will just use Apache Pig's function average that will do that for us. It will calculate the average value of, a, of the given field. And that's it. That's all. <coughs> and here is the complete, the, the complete uh, code required for this use case. You can see that the all in all, it took only 77 lines of code to implement all four reports, so the whole use case. I think that's, that's remarkable. Uh, now I will give Dushan a chance to try <laughs> and do the same thing with Java. Okay, so 77 lines of code, and Oops. have you seen that code? That's some nice readability code. That's, that's really nice, but who cares? Because something else is matters. <laughs> so uh, as Osvin said, this was all code uh, uh, for the pig script. We are now going to go slowly uh, through whole code in Java, and then we are going to, as Osvin did also, cover some details. So this is whole Java code. That was it. So not too much code, right? Well, it was approximately 1K lines of code, and uh, that really escalated quickly. I didn't expect that, so sorry. But yeah, a little bit more in details. Uh, if we want to have a MapReduce uh, app application in Java, first of all, we have to, of course, uh, instantiate it and, and run it, which we do it here with the proper configuration. Uh, but before we uh, run it, we have to instantiate a job, map reduce job, and to set up some things. Uh, this is how we are setting up uh, input format class and output format class. In this case, uh, in both cases, basically, it will be text because we are working with the JSON. So JSON is text. And uh, next thing 
is uh, setting up a map output key class and map output value class. What's that? Um, basically, uh, when you run your map reduce, uh, uh, output of map phase will be the input of the reduce phase. So in this case, what we are setting up is actually output of the, of the mapper, which will be a long writable class. Key, key, sorry, output key will be long writable class, class, which you can understand as a long serializable in Hadoop way. And the uh, output of uh, map phase will be, output value will be customer session writable. That is object that uh, we created sp uh, specifically for this occasion. And that's uh, uh, object that contains all the fields that Osran uh, extracted from JSON with for each generate function. So it has, uh, I don't know, session ID, uh, uh, array of products, uh, customer category ID, and stuff like that. Then we are uh, setting up uh, output key class and output value class. In this case, it has nothing to do with, uh, with the map phase. This is output of uh, our reduce phase. This is basically the output of our map reduce job, of our map reduce uh, application. We are setting uh, the key class that is going to be uh, null writable. In this case, that means that we don't need the key in our in our output file. Why is that? Because we are going to put the key in the JSON and JSON is going to be only thing. So output value class is text, which is basically uh, uh, a JSON record. Then we are uh, telling this job, which are uh, map, uh, mapper and reducer classes. These are things that are implemented. And then we are saying where the input data is and where we want to have output data in our cluster, in our uh, HDFS. And then we are submitting job and waiting it to be done. Uh, this is how mapper looks like. And this map method is actually where the clever things are. And if you, uh, if you have uh, an input JSON file, as we did, with, uh, for example, one million records, this map method will be called one million times. So for each record, this method will be called once. And what we are doing in this map method? Yeah, so uh, parameters uh, are long writable key, which is a Hadoop generated value. We are not working with it in this, in this example. Text value is actually one JSON record, one line of the, of the JSON file. And what we are doing with that, we are uh, transforming that JSON into our Java bean, into our Java object so we can man manipulate it. Uh, then we are extracting uh, category ID because that's what we are going to do. Uh, that's what, what we are going to use in our reduce and as a key because, as Ozan explained already, we are grouping on the group. So we need the key identifier to, have to, uh, to make it key of the, of the grouping. And uh, then we are consulting our list of categories, what Ozan also showed in, in, in a pig example. Uh, why we are doing that? Basically, we are joining groups in case if, for example, we, in some moment in time, we change the groups. We, but we didn't update the existing ones, we just added new ones. So we want to, to join only with the groups that actually uh, are of interest for us. And if that group uh, really exists, then we are creating our customer session writable object and fill it with data from JSON object. So that's, that's the part where uh, for each generate actually takes place. And then we are writing that into context, which means please map phase, transfer this to reduce phase. And our key is customer category ID and our uh, value is a session object. And this is how reduce, uh, reducer, uh, reducer looks like. Basically we have a, a reduce method which takes in uh, input key which is our customer category ID, and it has a uh, it has sorry it has a collection of values. So, for our file of one million records that was uh, triggering map file uh, map uh, method uh, one million times, this reduce method will be called as many times as groups we have. So all the values for each group will be grouped and transferred to reduce in a collection. Is that clear? Sort of. <laughs> OK. Um, then we are iterating through the values of that collection. 
and for each of the of the instances we are increasing the number of visits because you remember one JSON record is one visit so that's why we're increasing that that uh, that counter we are going through the list for each visit we are going through the list of products taking care of the of the prices of the products and taking care if the product was really purchased or not later uh, we are do doing the grouping of the things and later we are calculating average values that we need ordering and reordering things uh, how we want it and later we uh, writing the the values in the in the context in this case context is not transferring to any other phase basically context means write this to HDFS so this is our result and this is how result looks like it's again JSON record with some information in it and it's cut custom category ID description array of products which will have five products in it ordered by popularity so to say average number of views average number of purchases and average purchase so that was java part of the implementation i'll give you now a couple of seconds to recover from this shock and if i ask you now a question what was more easier to understand big or java yeah i think we all know the answer right so i won't say anything else let's now see what it did about uh, what our measurements about performance showed uh, for our tests we used uh, cloudera quick start virtual machine uh, and we conducted the tests on a single node cluster and also on a four node cluster just to compare the results you can see here the hardware that we used it's not really that important uh, let's talk about input files input files were divided into small groups uh, four small groups uh, we have a small one which is around 100 megabytes we have a medium one which is around 500 large one one gigabyte and an extra large one which is around 1.5 gigabyte let's see the performances on a single node cluster yeah the green line is java the yellow this line is this is what important really <laughs> yeah well i can argue with that the picture is clear but still i just say a couple of numbers so for the smallest input data pig took four minutes to finish its run for the biggest group of data it took three, 13 and a half minutes to finish the same run java on the other hand took only 40 seconds uh, for the smallest input file yeah i'm desperate uh, and for the biggest file it took three and a half minutes you see that the difference is really big but um, that's just something that we have to deal with i'll try to say now a little bit to explain why this happened so drastically in the java case dushan had a control over his code so he had he was able to design map and reduce phases the way he wanted it and if you i asked you now for the single node cluster what would be the best uh, scenario right one map and one reduced phase so he did that he only had one map and one reduced phase for its code for his code on the other hand we do not have such freedom with pig we do not uh, control the flow that pig compiler will work we only know that it will do this for us and this is what he uh, did for us so for the smallest input data pig compiler translated our code into eight map phases and four and five sorry reduce phases for the biggest file it provided 26 map phases and six reduce phases so what would happen in a single node cluster if you have 26 map phases yeah there will be definitely some waiting so i think this is one of the reasons why the difference was so big between the measurements time uh, this was a single node cluster do show me now show you the results on a four node cluster okay so uh, in case of uh, four node cluster situation a little bit better but still java owns big and uh, yeah times are 35 seconds for java for the smallest uh, amount of data and <coughs> under the minute uh, before uh, for the biggest one uh, while pig uh, needed uh, roughly two and a half minutes for the smallest one and over four minutes but that's much better I, I have to admit that that's much better than than 13 and a half minutes in single node cluster and if we compare that um, yellow lines are pig and green lines are java implementation so you see that pig really benefited from distributed environment and many nodes in the cluster that's definitely a benefit for pig and that's that's the the proper use case for pig but still it's slower so power speed <laughs> and this is Osrin trying to defend that 
Yeah, I won't even try to do so. Yeah, but, yeah. You do so, yeah. Right. <laughs> no, but still, I would just want to say a couple of things about how you can optimize your pig script. Uh, just to repeat, uh, pig compiler is translating pig Latin code into Java MapReduce, so that overhead cannot be avoided. You just have to live with that. That's basically the price that we are paying for other benefits. So, still, we have a pig optimizer. Uh, that's a component that is able to reorganize the execution order of your functions inside the pig script. So imagine that, for example, you have a P script where you are first uh, reading the data, then iterating through them, and then in the end filtering them. What Pig Optimizer will do is that if it's able, it will reorganize the order of execution in such a way that it will move filter function before iteration. And by doing so, it will remove, remove, reduce the amount of data for the iteration and reduce the uh, measurements. Uh, Graphis, anyone here heard of Graphis? Uh, it's an open source visualization software and we use it to generate graphical representation of execution plan of our pig script. So it will show you exactly how many map phases are there, how many reduce phases are there, what happened in this map, what happened in this reduce phase. So this can be very, very useful when you are trying to improve your performance. So you can reorganize the pig script the way you want, you can reduce the number of map phases and so on. So that's a really nice thing to have. Language support. Uh, I mentioned that P Pig has a predefined number of uh, functions, so you cannot really do some custom stuff with them, but luckily for us, Pig does support writing UDFs. Uh, UDF is short of user-defined function, and those can be written in the six languages. So uh, Java, Python, Jython, Groovy, Ruby, and JavaScript. Um, so if you have some custom feature, that you cannot fulfill with uh, Pix function, you can always write your own UDF. And the usage of those uh, UDFs is really simple. All you need to do, you need to import your library into Pig context by using function register. This is similar to import in Java. And then you need to call the function define, where you will specifically say, this is the class that I want to use. And later on in your Pig script, all you need to do is to call your UDF by the name that you define here. So basically, that's all that you need to do. Would you like to say something about Java? Yeah, I would like to say that if you are implementing uh, MapReduce in Java, you can use uh, uh, your favorite, uh, your other favorite language, and whatever uh, compiles into Java code, sorry, into bytecode and runs in JVM, you can use that. So uh, language support, again, <laughs> Java wins. Um, it's not that important. <laughs> Yeah, DevTools. Okay, so um, DevTools, we consider that as uh, how we test and how we debug our code. Um, I used MR unit, and that saved me a lot of time, really a lot of time. Be uh, why? That's because um, the Hadoop platform or HDFS platform has uh, one box which is name node and other boxes that are data nodes and on data nodes there is where your data is and there is where your jobs are running so if you want to uh, debug how things uh, are doing you're not going to debug them on on this node here but on those nodes over there so if you have a distributed environment where with four or five nodes you basically have to debug four or five computers at the same time so how you're going to do that that's not so easy task. You can uh, follow the log files, but again, following five log files at the moment, n not so you know easy. In, that's why uh, MR unit comes into place, and that is a library that provides us a solution for writing unit tests for a map reduce. And fairly simple as uh, any other unit test. You first prepare the unit test. In this case, uh, I am uh, configuring. Uh, a path to our list of uh, customer uh, categories and creating my mapper. So this is, this is going to be test for a map phase. And I'm saying uh, mapper, uh, map driver, new map driver, uh, and here's your mapper. And basically my, set is, uh, my test is prepared. Uh, this is how the test looks like. Uh, this is testing style. Uh, I'm telling the input and I'm asserting the output. So I'm the one who is going to check how the output looks like but MR unit can do that for you also so in this case I'm doing a little bit mocking before so if uh, code asks for configuration I want to be sure that my configuration is is uh, used 
So I'm not going to use a list of categories that is somewhere in uh, HDFS or any anywhere in this distributed environment. I want to use mine from a local file system from, you know, something like source main, uh, source test resources or, or whatever. So uh, in this for loop, I'm going through the input records and basically I'm feeding the test with input data and I'm just running the map phase with map driver run. And it gives me back a list of results and then what I have to do is just assert the output and make sure that everything is okay. Uh, in case of reducer, setup is f uh, pretty much look alike. So I'm in test, I'm just feeding the input to the test. I'm creating expected results. So in again, I will check what the results are and uh, if they are as expected. I'm just running the uh, reduce driver dot run. So basically what I'm saying is just run the reduce phase and I'm picking up result and checking if the result is uh, what I want it to be. Um, these were tests for map phase and for reduce phase uh, separately given, but a uh, good thing is that you have run, uh, you, have, uh, you can have tests for map reduce in total. So feeding the input for a map phase and expecting the output for, um, for reduce phase. And what is awesome with this library is that I was running it in a Windows environment and when all the tests were green and everything was as uh, I really wanted, I just compile, uh, compiled my, uh, my MapReduce job into one jar file, transferred it to our Linux cluster or single node cluster and run it and everything was running smoothly. So yeah, this saved me really a lot of time. And n not to mention I was using uh, my favorite IDE, so you can use it in Eclipse, NetBeans, if anybody really uses NetBeans, and IntelliJ IDEA, and so whatever you like. DevTools about Pig. So currently there is no uh, support from any IDE. So this means that you're basically stuck working in text editor. There is, there are some uh, plugins for the text editors. For example, I'm working, I'm using Sublime text editor, and there is a nice plugin that will enable you to have autocomplete functions and syntax highlighting. This will make your life a little bit easier. Not much, but it's something. Uh, since there is no support from IDE, there is no really possibility of debugging, at least not as you're used to do with Java. Uh, PIG does provide some diagnostic operators which will allow us to uh, be able to do, do some debugging without PIG script. It will, for example, show us the scheme of an alias, the value of an alias, the execution plan, and what happened be before this alias came into the execution part. So those are describe, dump, explain, and illustrate. These can be very helpful when you're stuck in your pig script. For pig testing, we have a pig unit library. Uh, it will enable you to write J unit tests for your pig script. It can run in two modes, local and MapReduce. By default, pig unit is running in local mode. So that's what I use here. Uh, and what it will do, it will create a virtual cluster out of your local file system. So you don't have to have Hadoop installed or anything like this. It won't work on HDFS directly. On the other hand, MapReduce mode does demand installation with Hadoop. So it will uh, use the, your clone cluster to run, the to run the tests, although it does require some additional configuration to do so. I have a question. Yeah? Uh, what's the running time of your test? <laughs> uh, okay, so in the local mode, uh, in local mode, uh, you have to since it's creating a virtual cluster of your local file system, it is doing that every time. So for each execution of tests, it will do that. And it does take at least, I don't know, 30 seconds for a small test. 30 seconds. Yeah, I know. Okay. <laughs> How much does it take in my MR unit? Sorry? How does MR unit work? MR unit, I don't know, under a second maybe. <laughs> we, we I didn't say that, okay. Uh, let's see here the example of one test. So uh, similar to every JUnit test, first you, what you need to do is to uh, set up it. And what we'll, we'll be doing here is we'll create a new instance of a class pig test, and we will just provide the location of our pig script. Since we want to validate uh, the results of our pig script execution, we want to mock the input data. And we'll do this by using override function. We will just say, instead of products and categories, load our already prepared test data. So we know what to expect. And the simple test uh, looks like this. So it's one liner. 
all you, you can do is to validate that the results of an alias, in this case result top five products, is what, is what you have prepared in a, a file in this project. So it's what you expect it to be. Unfortunately, we do not have any other choices when it comes to testing. Not as Dushan had, for example, with MR unit, he, he could test map phase separately, then reduce phase separately, then all together. We cannot do that with pig unit. This is all we can do for now. But pig unit is still a young library, so we do expect some good stuff from it. Let's see what we learned today. Uh, first pig, uh, what are the good things about pig? It does have a high abstraction level. This is a very good thing. Uh, code is simple to read, simple to write. Therefore, uh, you have a fast development. The maintenance is really easy. You have 77 lines of code, and he had 1,000. Mm -hmm. So that's a good stuff. And if you are stuck with uh, some custom features and you cannot use Pig's built-in functions, you can always extend it. You can always write your own UDFs, or you could just use already uh, written UDFs from the Piggy Bank project. The negative side, well, you saw the chart for performance. There's really nothing we can do about that. That's just the way the things are. So I won't say <laughs> more about that. And last negative thing, maybe, is the restriction of a Pig Latin language itself. So there are some, some things that you cannot do in Pig Latin. In this case, uh, I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, Dushan had one result file as an output of his job, but I had two. Why is that? Because first report was uh, really different than the other three. And there was really no possibility of joining them in one single record. I mean, there was, but it wouldn't really look good. So that's why I had to, do, to have two output results and that's just some limits of a uh, Pig Latin language. This can be maybe improved by using the extensions, so it's not really that bad. Okay, regarding Java, we saw power and speed and everything, so Java is definitely uh, on plus side over there. And uh, control, because if you really know what you're doing, if you really know how to prog program MapReduce application, then you could easily tweak this example to be even more faster and to even uh, more use the uh, advantages of distributed environment. So, yeah, that's definitely plus for Java. Tools, your favorite ID, your Java and your second favorite language. So basically testing, debugging, because while I was uh, uh, writing uh, things in uh, uh, in tests in uh, MR unit, I was able to you know stick the the breakpoint wherever I wanted and to see what's happening. Ozen didn't have that chance because he simply has to wait to for pig to to run and to finish. Um, minus side complexity, yeah, kind of because we saw the 77 against 1k and I'm not sure what would happen if we would have, for example, pig script of 400 lines and easy yeah. easy yeah 400 lines and i don't know six output results i'm not sure how java output uh, java code would look like so that would probably explode it even more and that's the next thing two of us will probably be doing checking some really really uh, big big script and uh, implementing that java to see how really big explosion will be maintenance of course if code explodes that you, then you will have problem uh, with maintenance, so I beg you, please do not use JavaScript in JVM to write your map reduce. You are going to have some troubles. And uh, control again on the minus side, uh, because if you are not so experienced with uh, writing map reduce jobs, you probably could cause some damage there and uh, maybe end up with. Uh, with uh, your, you know, not using the, the distributed environment very well, and probably maybe got even slower than than Pig. If you know, if you have a guy who is really experienced with Pig at Pig optimizer and tuned it really good, and on the other hand, you have a guy who doesn't have any clue about MapReduce in Java. So that's basically it from our side for today. Uh, we have some, yeah, some like four minutes for questions. So. Please, if you have any questions. <laughs> no? Anyone? Is it, was, it, was it that boring or? <laughs> I have that one. Yeah, go. You said that Pig practically translates into Java language. Yeah. What causes the performance issues if it's Java in the end, the same way, so what do you do? 
Yeah. Uh, well, basically, the main slide to bring back the slide with maps and reduces. Uh, let's see. So basically, one of the reasons, the main reason, is that first there is some time needed to translate that code. So that's definitely one part of it. Then uh, you don't have control of how many map and reduce phases will be there. So he only developed uh, one map on reduce phase, but we didn't have control here. So it ended up being 26 map phases. And it really is, even though those will be executed parallel, parallel, parallel on the several nodes, you don't have 26 nodes. So there will be some uh, sequential execution. So that also uh, demands some time. And we are not really sh certain that pig compiler can match the human written Java map reduce task. So it's, it's still an uh, algorithm. It still has some flaws. So definitely that's the point where the time goes. Yeah, I, w I would add, add to that that uh, I had one jar file. So one map reduce job in one jar file. And while pig compiler was compiling, uh, in this case, uh, five jar files. So some time is also lost in transferring those jar files to di distributed nodes and bringing back the result. So. Uh, can you define UDFs to improve these numbers? Uh, UDF, yeah. Uh, basically, what you could do is, in this particular case, as he said, he had two output results. So maybe what we, uh, what we could do is write a UDF that is going to consume JSON uh, file a little bit differently than this, uh, this uh, JSON loader, for example. Or we could create a function that, does, uh, that, uh, that uh, substitutes uh, a couple of, of uh, those, uh, those uh, commands that Osram did. So basically, maybe we could uh, write a, a UDF function that actually uh, does the counting and grouping uh, and, you know, tweak that a little bit better. You can use UDF to re-implement already written function in pig, like for each and so on filter, yeah. but you cannot uh, use it to write map reduce code. You cannot use it to map, map phases. It's UDF, it's just an extension to the functions. You cannot use it for map or reduce phases. So you cannot basically improve execution of map or reduce phases. Yeah, what, what the problem with that approach is, is if you really write that function, it will end up in pig script and you cannot be sure how the pig compiler will recognize it and what the compiler will pr uh, produce of that because it's not going to be, you know, just I'm taking this function as it is. It, it, it is going to do something with that. It, it, it is going to be compiled again in some Java map, uh, in other uh, map reduce jobs, you know. Uh, can we use streaming data or just in batch mode when we do with yeah. loop? Well, this is pig and Java produce is all about batch, pr batch processing. For streaming data, you probably have to use other Hadoop services such as Spark or I know Fez and so on. So pig is for batch processing. It's not for streaming. Anyone else? Okay, if no, then... Cool. Yeah, we are out of time any anyhow, so... Thank you very much Thanks and for listening. Yeah. See you next year. Yeah.